Hey there, I'm Josh with Bass Buzz, and if you're in the market for your first bass, you've come to the right place. Me and two other professional bass players are taking seven beginner level basses through their paces, and this is bass number six in our series. We're looking at the Yamaha TRBX 304. This is a little bit more expensive than any of the other basses we've looked at so far. So in this video, we're gonna start finding out, do you get what you pay for? Is a more expensive bass necessarily worth the money? Let's find out. is really really narrow um, and I like that for some things but not for other things hmm. I like it for playing chords mm -hmm. and I like it for playing quick stuff but I don't like it for like big fat dig in just groovy stuff feels good yeah um, pretty tight string tension neck feels great um, in general I like it. it's kind of flat and, and narrow uh, um, definitely easy to get from string to string but feels like the spacing is, is appropriate. It's not really tight. There's some really good stuff going for this neck. First of all, it's the only bass we've looked at that has a composite neck, um, which is something you see a lot in higher quality basses and not a lot in the cheaper basses. Um, also, we've got a 24 fret neck, which... which I love. I do have one complaint, which I've already talked about in previous videos. This cutaway starts at the end of the 20 second fret, which means that to get to those top two frets, you gotta start reaching over and you can't just slide your hand down like you would anywhere else in the neck. That really bugs me and I wish that manufacturers, including Yamaha, but many other companies, would get the net on that and start their cutaways at the end of the last fret. Um, also, the, uh, the way the frets are cut on the G-string side here feels a little rough. It's not quite sharp, but I definitely can feel the frets as I slide my fingers across. So that's something I feel like could be improved on too. It's like what you actually want when you're like trying to dial in different tones. Everything changes the sound, and it changes it in a way that's controllable and noticeable. Yeah, um, neck position sounding good. I mean, it was nice and solid. Um, Pretty well balanced tone. Nothing really jumped out to me about mm -hmm. uh, you know the articulation dynamic of it, but but it, it was good. It was just a balanced sound. Um, the bridge position definitely added that necessary quack to it, which was nice. Um, it seems to have actually a lot of dynamic to it, um, as opposed to the first position. There seems to be if I play harder, I get more quack. If I play less. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's not just treble, it's, it's definitely the, the pickup. Yeah, um, nice bass tone, actually, really nice. You know, it doesn't have a specific sound, I wouldn't say, other than, mm -hmm. um, you know, the tone is tight, but still bassy. Uh, more like the articulation from something like a sousaphone or a tuba. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to like a P bass or a J bass style pickup. Tone wise, this instrument has some really great stuff going on. We're definitely looking at some higher quality electronics here, which you would hope for, for the uh, a little bit of extra money compared to the other basses we've looked at. Really, I think it sounds kind of the way it looks. Um, it's got, it doesn't have a naturally like warm vintagey sound. It sounds like the bass has a little bit of a natural scoop to the tone, so there's a lot of bottom and some nice treble definition, but maybe a little bit missing in the lower mids, um, which for me is actually not my favorite because I like a lot of low mids and punchiness. But when you're dealing with higher quality equipment, I think stuff starts to get a little bit more subjective. So our spread on the tone on this was kind of in the three to four, maybe four and a half range. 
um, between the three of us. So it's definitely a lot of good tone options on this instrument. Comfort's good. Uh, the weight's nice, you know, kind of in between, not too heavy, not too light. Um, it seems to sit and stay, which is pretty cool, uh, mm. where some other ones that are a little bit lighter tend to slide around a little bit. Mm. Comfort wise, this bass is great. The neck balances really well. The body's just the right weight, not too heavy, not too light. I really like the way the contour is shaped over here for my particular torso. It's, it's fitting on my body really well. And I also, I like these little uh, thumb pockets on the pickups. I've never seen that before. Um, I don't, I'm not used to it, you know, if I own this bass, I would probably use it a lot more. Um, but at this point, I just like it. I, I think it's a cute idea. So that tongue's really good, um, really well balanced, super punchy. Um, that's my, technically the sound I like is a punchier tone. Once again, like I mentioned before, it, it seems to be if I play really hard, I get a nice tone out of it as opposed to it pushing the pickup too hard one way or the other. Huh. Um, the, the, the attack given by my hand is, is much more dynamic than some of the other pickups. probably the most versatile. I would say five on versatility. Nice. This is my first five. Yeah. That's exciting. All right, let's get the big reveal. Mm. Gentlemen, you know what to do. Let's take a look, see. Hey, so kind of makes sense when, you know, I was saying I wasn't really familiar exactly with the tones. We're looking at two humbucker pickups. Um, yeah. So between each one, you know, even though I heard a lot of differences dynamically, uh, I definitely was hearing things that I wouldn't have heard typically from the neck pickup that I really liked mm -hmm. um, and vice versa for the bridge pickup. So uh, I'd say that the shape of the body and the feel is not exactly my favorite, but um, yeah. but you know, not a lot to put up with when you got such a cool playing instrument that sounds this good. It's time to take the blindfold off. Ba -ba -da -da -ba 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 -ba! Oh, so yeah. this is the Yamaha TRBX 304, 304 in English. Uh, I like the look of it. Rugged knobs. Look at it. I don't know if you can see the, the spikies on those knobs, but that's yeah, serious. keep intruders away. Yeah. Overall, this was um, this was a good one. I don't I don't have any major complaints on this one. This one was really fun to play, and it had probably the most sounds that we were able to do. So. So again, the Yamaha TRBX 304 is a little bit more expensive than the other bases we looked at. This retails for around 350 these days. Um, whereas a lot of the other bases are more around 200 or 250. So do you get what you pay for? Is this bass a lot better than the other bases we've looked at? I'd say in some ways, definitely. There's no question that these are better pickups uh, quality wise than we've seen in any other bass. So if you have the money, it's probably worth going around three or $400 for a bass um, uh, in the sense that you just get better stuff on the bass. You know, manufacturers can't afford to put nice pickups into a $200 instrument. Uh, that said, I do feel there are some ways this instrument can be improved. I There are some fun sounds to be found with the selector switch, but for me, it's a little too complex to have. Uh, you've got master volume, blend for the pickups, then bass and treble, uh, booster cut, and then the five-way selector. It just feels like a bit much, especially for what's basically an entry-level instrument at $350. What I would prefer for this bass is to ditch this whole selector idea and just go with a three-band active EQ for bass, mid, and treble. And that would let me maybe get rid of that little mid-scoop feeling that I'm having. I might actually be able to get the sound I want out of this bass if I could just do a little mid-boost um, on the active EQ, but right now it's just bass and treble. So Yamaha, I think you're off to a great start. There's a lot of really good things about this bass. Personally, I would go with a three band active EQ, ditch this and get better access to the 24th fret with the cutaway here. But really great bass. I would say it's definitely uh, a contender for the top spot in our shootout. So we've got one more bass to review in the next video, and then we'll be picking our favorites and seeing who wins the best beginner bass competition.
If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and go to basebuzz.com for more info. If you want to know tech specs or more about the construction quality, how everything arrived out of the box with the setup and the strings and how all the hardware looked, and also learn more about our review methodology. So I'll see you in the next review video.